Hey guys, in this video, I wanna talk about eight Roscale mistakes that you might be making and how you can fix them. First of all, quickly, what is Roscale? In Spanish guitar, nylon string, anytime you hit your nails against a string, technically, I guess we could call that Roscale, but they really are typically patterns. So when you see this kind of thing, going pinky ring, middle index, four stroke Roscale, that's definitely a Roscale. I suppose you could say that this is Roscale too, just going down with your index finger. But we're going to talk about some typical ways to do Roscale this as well, the triplet Roscale. I'm using my nails to do that. Up with the thumb, down with the middle, down with the thumb. Now this is not an easy thing to do. It takes a long time to get good at this and there's some dexterity and strength and stamina stuff involved in the right hand. But there's so many things you can do to work on your Roscale and get better at it without a guitar. You can be in the car working on some of the concepts that I'm going to be talking about today. A scale mistake number one is having your pinky too low. What I mean by that is we want our hand to be on an even plane with the strings like this, but because our pinky is shorter than all the other fingers, it's gonna hit fewer strings and that's okay, but we, without even thinking about it, sometimes our pinky wants to hit all the strings and it thinks that it should hit all the strings, but if you do that, you're gonna be dipping down on the pinky side like this. You're not level and you're gonna get stuck in the strings. Try to level it out like this. Your pinky will hit maybe only a couple of treble strings. Your ring finger will hit a few more or a couple more, more and more, so your index finger finger in this four stroke cross scale that I'm talking about, that's pinky, then the ring finger, the middle, and then the index. Your index might hit the maximum number of strings depending on where your, your thumb is, but just make sure things are level and don't worry that your pinky hits fewer strings. It's actually a good thing because most of the time a cross scale is a flourish into a beat. So the beginning of it doesn't need to be strong and loud anyway. We can go progressively louder as we get to a stronger finger like the index. So we might go one, two, three. In that particular Roscale pattern, I would say the index is the most important because that's where the downbeat is. So hit fewer strings with your pinky on purpose and that's gonna level you out and you're gonna play better. Mistake number two is having your fingers too deep in the strings. And what happens there is this sound. Hear that plasticky kind of, I'm digging in there. I'm actually, sometimes if you ever feel that your skin touches a string, you know that you're too deep in the string. But even if you're not going that far, if you get too deep in there and you're pressing against it, we get this plasticky sound of the nails against the string. But really all that we need is just the tip of our nail to touch the string, just the tip, especially if you're gonna be coming back up. If you're really deep in the strings, then when you come up for an upstroke for a Roscale like this, where we go pinky ring, middle index up like that, you're totally gonna be stuck on that upstroke and you're gonna hang on that string. We only want just the tip of the nail. So when you hear a really aggressive Roscale, it's not coming from being so deep in the strings, but rather from good technique, having a nice quick attack, using just the tip of the nail and being efficient. Mistake number three is moving from the small knuckle. If you've seen some of my other tutorials, I talk about this a lot. This really matters uh, in both hands. We don't wanna be moving from the small knuckle like this, but rather the big knuckle this way. And that goes for Roscale as well. So if you're going like this, when you're first starting out, you might not know that this is not the most efficient way to do things. But if you go like this, then you only have your weak knuckles to propel into that Roscale, and you're not gonna get very much power out of it, and you're gonna get fatigued for sure. We wanna bring it all the way in like this, and then just blast them out like that. Mistake number four is sounding mushy. And what I mean by that is we wanna have a distinct stroke for each and every stroke of the Roscale, whichever Roscale that we're doing. But what can happen, especially on the four stroke Roscale, this guy, before we really master it, we sometimes tend to go faster than we should. So if we go too fast, when we're not ready to go too fast, what happens is this. See? We're not hearing four distinct things there. So in a way, all the fingers are coming out at once, almost. Like there might be these two at the same time and the next two or something, they're not distinct. What we need to do is kind of squeeze the fingers towards each other. Imagine your index finger pushing in the direction of your pinky and vice versa, kind of squeezing like that. That creates some friction, some tension, and we can kind of launch off the finger, kind of help us keep these from falling out. So the mistake that we're making when we sound mushy sometimes is they're coming out before they should come out. So to work on that, just make sure you're going nice and slow and just count to four. One, two, three, four, one. Make, making sure only the finger that you want to hear at that instant is coming out and not the next one too early. Mistake number five is not having your fingers fully tucked in. Now all of these mistakes are related, right? Tucking our fingers all the way in can help make sure that we're moving from the big knuckle, but don't tuck them in like this. You might feel, well, I'm fully tucked, right? No, we wanna move from the big knuckle like that. So just imagine that the tips of your fingers are gonna come down to the base of your palm right here. 
not to the middle of your palm or your upper knuckles here. So if you can reach way down here low, that means you're moving from the big knuckle. That's how we want to be tucked. Now, once we're here, it's like throwing a baseball, right? We're not, if we throw a baseball or punch somebody to be for, to have a violent example from here, you're not, you don't have much room to move, right? We're going to come all the way back and then get a nice follow through motion. And you guessed it. Mistake number six is the opposite of what we just said. And it's not having a full follow through motion. What we want to do is go all the way out. So we're all the way in when we begin and come all the way out. What we don't want to do is just kind of as soon as we hit the strings just kind of peter out right there it's the same thing as swinging a baseball bat right if we stop right when we make contact it's not going to propel the ball forward like we want to right all the way out all the way out all the way out all the way out so bring your fingers all the way in tuck into the base of your palm just bring the pinky out and make sure that these are kind of squeezed together like i talked about in an earlier mistake right then bring the next one out only keep it out middle finger index Mistake number seven is unevenness. And this is a problem for everybody in almost any technique. What we're gonna do most of the time in Roscao is have a nice quick one, two, three, four, and the fourth one, generally speaking, uh, lasts longer like this. So that was, you could say a triplet plus one, but they're all even until the last one rings out, right? One, two, three, four. So if we try to do those a bunch of times in a row, it's really tough to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and not get this sound. Here's what we don't want. Well, we can help practice this by doing this. This is a number four, right? An even number. Let's count to an odd number like three and go like this. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Trying to give a little bit more of a pulse, a little bit more of a, an accent, a little bit more of a push every time we say the number one. So we're going one, two, three, one, two, just like triplets. But because it's a number four, it's going to rotate our accent to a different finger every time like this. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. That same idea applies for the triplet raw scale. Okay, we got three strokes. Let's count to four instead of three. One, two, always accenting a little more on the number one. One, two, three, four. 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 That can really help you even things out, and I suggest you do that with a metronome. Roscao mistake number eight, our final mistake, is moving from the arm or the wrist too much. Now there are ways that we can and should move from the wrist. For example, in the triplet Roscao, this thing, I'm really powering it from the swiveling of the wrist, right? I suggest first though, once you're first learning this technique, that you use only your fingers and not your wrist, just to memorize the, the motion. Then when we really get it fast, the swiveling of the wrist is really the engine behind getting that fast. But in the triplet Roscao, we don't want to move from your elbow. And a lot of people do that. And so that's just horribly inefficient. So, and it's very tempting though to do that because we, we want to get this like a bicep curl thing happening every time. We've got to be relaxed in the inside of your elbow and make sure everything is driven from the wrist. Conversely though, in the four stroke Roscao, this happens a lot. I see people going like this with their wrist. Here's where we don't want any swiveling of the wrist, right? You can see like if you needed to play a bunch of them in a row really quickly, that um, you wouldn't be able to do it because your hand went all the way out here. But it's just an inefficiency. It's like, it's like running a race with your arms flailing around or something. It's like, we don't need to do that. And in fact, the beginning of that mistake, the way that I'm rendering it right now, is the is our first mistake, right? The pinky ends up too low and it gets you too deep in the string. So a lot of these mistakes uh, compound each other. You make one and then all of a sudden you're cascading into getting all of eight of these mistakes in one shot, so which we definitely don't want to do. So make sure that you stay nice and still. Anchor your thumb is a good thing to do. You don't always have to do that, but I suggest doing that for so many techniques at first just to keep you honest and keep you in one spot and make sure that only your fingers are moving. We're powering everything from that big knuckle every time. So those are eight of what I think are some really common Roscao mistakes. Let me know in the comments if there's a Roscao mistake that I left out of this list. If you need more Spanish guitar troubleshooting like this, check out this video where I talk about the top picado mistakes you need to avoid.